welcome to TL Physics and today I am going to talk about Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law is one of a series of laws uh, that can be, be built into the universal gas law. Now Boyle's Law is to do when temperature is constant. So the only thing that's going to be affecting um, the system is the pressure change and the volume change. Now Boyle, when he uh, measured, he worked out that the pressure was directly proportional to 1 over the volume. And what I mean by that is when looking at the volume of an object versus the pressure, the kind of graph you get is this one here, where you have a y equals a constant over an x graph. Here you get this curve. And what this is saying, as the volume increases, the pressure decreases. If I was to write this out in a slightly different way, I would have pressure is a constant times 1 over volume here. So if I plotted 1 over volume and the pressure here, I would end up with a lovely linear graph here. This constant is assuming that everything is remaining the same in the system. So the temperature, the number of molecules, what actually is in there, is all remaining the same. So you can actually use this relationship quite powerfully to work out if situations change. So let's have a go. I know at 20 degrees C, my pressure is 100 kilopascals and my volume is 2 meters cubed. Okay. Now, that's at point A. At point B, my pressure has increased to 400 kilopascals and I want to know what my new volume is. I can use this relationship here because this constant is going to be the same. I've said nothing's changed. I've not mentioned the temperature's changed. I've given you the temperature, but I haven't said it's changed. I, if I can work out this constant, I know this is the same for now and for next. So let's work it out in A. So I've got 100 times 10 to the 3 equals a constant times 1 over 2. So my constant is going to be 200 times 10 to the 3. So this constant is exactly the same constant that I could use for part B. So part B, my pressure is 400 times 10 to the 3 times by my constant, which is 200 times 10 to the 3, sorry, not times, equals that, times 1 over volume. Okay. So moving that over, I've got 400 over 200 here. So that's going to be 2 equals 1, um, 1 over V. So my V is going to be a half metres cubed. Okay. So this here, my pressure has increased by four times, which means my volume has decreased by four times. Okay. So this is actually quite a powerful relationship that you can use. Now this relationship is not on your data sheet. What is on your data sheet is this here. Or, okay, so that is on your data sheet. But number of moles, number of molecules, universal gas constant, Boltzmann's constant, and temperature. If I was to rearrange this, I would end up with P equals either NRT times 1 over V, or P equals NKT times 1 over V. In my situation, I assumed all of this was constant. All of this was constant. And therefore, all, all this formula is here is just using that one there. Okay? So this is the one that's on your data sheet. However, this one is literally just a derivation of that. So that is the basics of Boyle's law. But just to note on this graph here, this one in particular, Let's have a look. Now, I've, already, I've always said that the important part of any graph are the gradient or the actual uh, area under the graph. And I want to talk about the area under the graph here. So the area, we're going to pretend it's a square, okay? The area is going to be pressure times by volume. If this was a square. So pressure is force divided by area times by a volume. A volume of a cross-sectional thing is literally the area times by the length, so the cross-sectional area times by the length.
which means that these areas cancel and I am left with force times the length of the object is moved. That is work done. So what it means is that the area under the graph equals the energy needed to change volume. And this makes sense. If I um, want to, if I want to make it more pressure, I've got to put energy in to squeeze it. So that's why the if I move it here, that change in volume. So if I was looking from here to here, it's going to take me much more energy. So if I looked at this position here, this bit here, it's going to take me much more energy to squeeze that. then it's going to squeeze that, because that area is much, much bigger. So if I was going to squeeze it from here to there, much more energy than squeezing it from here to here. And that's because the area under the, this graph is the energy needed to squeeze it. Okay? So that there is Boyle's law.